Hi, Shay. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We're so excited to have you on board. And um, we would love to get to know uh, you a little bit better as a person, as an artist, uh, sort of how you got into the space. Uh, I always love to hear like sort of origin stories of how people enter into crypto, NFT, but I'm sure you were an artist before that. So I would love to hear sort of your journey as an artist and what led you into getting into, um, you know, this crypto space. Awesome. So my name is Shaylin Wallace, but I go by um, Shay the Surrealist. I've been, that's kind of been my name since like uh, February of this year. And um, I began digital art in 2014 and I would edit like on my phone, like different um, editing apps and I would like manipulate images just for the fun of it. It became kind of like a way for me to escape and then eventually it turned into a hobby and then that hobby turned to a passion and then around 2017 I saved up all my money and I got my first MacBook Pro and um, that's so I can get you know the Adobe subscription as well because you know you had to pay for that <laughs> and after that I think my ideas became more complex with the tools I had and eventually you know I became I started freelancing a little bit and um, in summer of 20 of yeah summer of 2020 I became a full-time artist and ever since then I've been working with different companies such as like Adobe, Netflix, AMC, Warner Bros. And um, I also make art for myself. That's like the main, my main priority, of course. And it's just, a, it's just a passion of mine to just, you know, turn ordinary images into like extraordinary you know, compositions that I create, you know, freely. Amazing. And um, I see you have, um, I went on your website, I see you have a lot of works with sort of the digital space. Um, and then I see the projects that you've done with for other companies, which is amazing. Um, sort of what's your, um, is there a particular style? So if someone would look, to, you know, to buy your work, is there a, spe a specific sort of DNA that goes hand in hand with, with who you are in your art? For me, I feel like I have a lot of different um, surreal styles. So some of them can be very you know minimalistic others can be very um like detailed and like you know kind of like a double take and then something that could be like very funny and pun intended like my cumulus cat or my sugar saucer so i feel like i, I make artwork for myself but like everyone has like their favorites that they love so i like that because like art is you know it's it has a you can it's a way for people to communicate and you know just you know i think everyone can uh can everyone has like a favorite of uh, peace of mind? I would love to hear um, how you got into uh, NFT space. I see you have a whole section with just your NFTs, which is, you know, I feel like I, I, I speak to so many artists every day and everyone's sort of in their completely different journeys. Some say that they've got into this sort of game late and then some people like have never even heard of nfts you know they kind of would question like what do you do so i would love to hear your journey how you got into it uh, yeah give us give us the origin story of that yeah so it was actually in august 2020 i saw some of like my friends on twitter they started you know posting about nfts i i have no idea what it was so i tried to research but you know when you don't understand something it's just harder to research your own rather than someone you know blatantly tell you what it is so i was like okay it's whatever i didn't pay any attention to it and then i think i eventually applied to like super rare in like september or october never heard back so i was like okay well there's that and then it wasn't until i think it was january of uh this year and someone from the async um art which is like another it's a whole different nft platform they reached out to me and basically was like hey we would love to have you on our platform we love to like you know uh basically tell you about nfts and you know how you can you know sell your work and i was like okay cool so then i had set up a meeting with him and basically after that meeting i understood what nfts were <laughs> and he told me to apply to their platform so i applied i got i got um accepted like two weeks later but I didn't pay any attention to it still because I was like still like you know like eh, my work is not gonna sell so I finally you know had the courage to mint one of my pieces in February and it was like it was a Friday night I minted it and that night I went out and I was like okay I'm not gonna you know worry about it I'm not gonna overthink about it next thing you know you know how Friday nights are you know I was in college so you know how Friday nights are 
And next morning I wake up and it's just on the Discord. It's like, congrats, congrats. And I'm just like, what is going on? And then I was like, I looked at the messages. Turns out my piece sold nine hours after I minted it. And I was like, what? Amazing. And I, I, I put the price for 1.5 ETH. So I was just like, that's insane. Like it, after that, I think I was like, okay, I'm sold. Let, let's do this. Like, cause before, you know, you see everyone getting sales. You don't think it's going to happen to you. So when it happens to you, especially like nine hours after it's like, Oh, so this is real. <laughs> so then after that, I just began to like, you know, I didn't mint a lot because, you know, I was still trying to figure out what NFTs were, um, but I just began to like, you know, uh, get involved more in the community. You know, I had like, you know, people ask me for help and stuff. I would like, you know, try to tell them what I knew and like try to get involved more. And um, then I got on other platforms and stuff. So it was it was it was it's I still feel like um. Not not far behind, but I still feel like there's so much still to learn, even though I started like kind of this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we always talk about it. I think we're 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 super early, right? Um, we're still in sort of wild, wild west days, right? People are still yeah. trying to figure out um sort of how to enter into a space. What's one thing? I mean, so from from your story that I've heard that this 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 person who reached out to you and sort of like guided you and educated you, right? was the one that sort of pushed you forward to actually like take a chance and start minting. Um, what do you think, like how, how, how do we inspire other artists, young artists to, to you know, enter into the space and, and, and just start experimenting and start le or, like learning? Any suggestions for any new artists that haven't minted yet? Um, well, I'm part of like the Black NFT community and um, they do a lot of like spaces or clubhouses literally to onboard people and get them like educated on what NFTs are. And I think that's really helpful because back then I really wanted, I needed somebody to just basically tell me like break down it in simplistic form because it was so confusing to, you know, what is an NFT? Why are people buying it? And then also the crypto side, I knew a little bit more about the crypto side more than the nft side so then once you get to know like understand both of them that's when you kind of just was like oh like it just clicks in your brain so i think when mm. people you know can explain to you in like the simplistic form but also like even like help you set up like your metamask and stuff like that that will help people and make them you know it'll push them a little bit further to even like prepare to mint something mm -hmm. Thank you. How did you, you said that you set the price at 1.5 ETH. Can I, um, can I ask how you determine the price? Because I think uh, right now, even as we're, you know, we're working with artists and we had to give them some guidance in terms of pricing, but it's also, it's a very sort of like, how do you value your work and how do you value your work in this new sort of sphere, right? And we still have to, so I would love to know sort of your thought process of how you can on like making the decision of pricing at a 1.5. Um, honestly, I had a, I, <laughs> I remember when I was thinking about the prices, um, I was talking to like the people who were on, who worked at the, um, like the company, like, like a few people like to help me, you know, get started. And I was like, I thought 1.5, it was like the general, like mm. average at the time. So I thought like one ETH is a little too low, two ETH is a little too high. So I was like, I'll just do mm -hmm. 1.5 ETH. So that's kind of how I did it. I just kind of did like a median average. And I mean, I guess now the ETH price then versus now, I mean, to, to me, that was still a lot. It's regardless, it's still a lot. So I was like, let's see. That's why I was, I was so surprised when it sold because someone, because someone just bought it, you know, they, on mm -hmm. the spot. They didn't be like, mm -hmm. oh, let's see, like, you know. So it's still surprising to this day how someone just bought it, but you know. Well, you have amazing work. So anyone is lucky to to collect your work and I'm definitely going to be looking into how I can purchase more. I, I see that you're on several different marketplaces. Do you think uh, for artists that's, that are entering into a space, do you think that makes sense? And sort of, is, is that like a, a thoughtful strategy of yours is kind of to have different NFTs on different platforms and do you sort of uh, curate them based on the platform that it's on? Yeah, I think um, while when I started minting on different platforms, it was a way to like um, have different collectors. I know there's like different collectors on each platform. Um, some some platforms work better than others for me personally, but I just want to experiment and like try different platforms, see how things work. But of course, I have my favorite platforms. And then there's like more platforms that I never used to use back then that I use more now than others. So it, I think it just it just 
it changes as I change. So it's like the more knowledgeable I get, the more I'm just like, okay, let me do this on this one. Let me do this on this one. Like every single platform I use for like different artworks or like different series or like different collections. Um, but I do plan on like cleaning up my my platforms, you know, before 2022 ends. So yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, I would love to learn sort of, um, you know, you, you answered, you know, a question about how do we get more people onto this platform, right? Uh, we're hoping with Larry, we're going to provide the tools to help um, to help uh, the creatives to actually grow their NFTs as businesses. So we're going to give them the tools uh, like analytics management, right? And, and being able to provide uh, customized storefronts and an easy credit card checkout so you can get your non-crypto communities into the space to start interacting uh, with NFTs, right? Because what we found is the fact that, you know, people are a little bit hesitant of trying to set up their wallet and trying to have everything linked. So if we have an easy sort of credit card checkout for your, you know, for your friends to start um, interacting with NFTs, I think that's like one barrier that uh, we, kept, we kept hearing over and over again. Also, because we are um, using um, the, Bitcoin blockchain, uh, there's no gas fees. So we're kind of trying, again, another barrier that we kept hearing from artists that it's expensive, the gas fees are super high and it's expensive for them to actually start collections. Um, can you think of other sort of um, barriers that you think uh, new artists that are gonna be entering into this space? What other tools can we provide you guys in order to make your like, you know, NFT business a little bit more successful? I feel like what you touched on is those like I think the album I would say those because it, those gas fees like as as you know ETH increases of course the gas fees are going to and especially if there's like different like those collections like 10k or 8k yeah. also makes like it fluctuates the gas so that's something very important and I do agree on like how not, not everyone has you know a wallet set up or they, they don't want to like invest in crypto just yet because people are still you know skeptical but yeah. like um, if they do have the U.S. dollars, then they can use their um, their their like card. Then they will probably do so to like support somebody and buy it. So that's something I would I was literally would say those two main things. Oh well, I'm I'm glad that we're on the same page. Uh, and I guess my last question is, you know, how do we um, this 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 space tends to be a little bit more, um, you know, male male centric, right? Um, and I feel like there's um, a lot of people are sort of questioning the fact that, okay, this we're, we're entering the sort of new um, uh, uh, decentralized web 3.0. So how do we do it with the, you know, with the most uh, diversity and how do we offer the most sort of access to as many people as possible? So like, do you have any input on how, how we can diversify this web 3.0 and not sort of repeat the mistakes of previous generations. Yeah, I, I think curation is really nice. Um, you can do like, you do like curated um, shows, curated um, like clubhouse or spaces meetings and just have like, a, like, a, like all different diverse artists or women or like people of color or just anyone in different backgrounds. You can have them like highlight, you can highlight artists as well. I see a lot of people doing that as well, but um, even on socials, you can like, you know, have different tweets, like, like, oh, this is like a list of women, but like, I don't, I know if people don't really like lists, so I would, I would definitely say like, have a way to like show the person's artwork with like, who you're trying to highlight, because we have lists, a lot of people don't really click on the people, but mm -hmm. uh, those are some ways I would definitely say, because spaces are becoming more popular, mm -hmm. and like, I've been seeing them um, highlighting, you know, certain people a couple, like a couple times a day and stuff. So mm -hmm. that's really nice. Cause I think once you, once you get to hear the artist's voice and like their background and stuff, I think you can yeah. work. So that's a good way to do it um, for sure. Well, Shay, I would love to invite you to our NFT with Layer, which we hold on Thursdays at noon. Uh, we would love to introduce you to our community. We just started doing these live spaces uh, pretty recently, but we just started highlighting Satoshi artists. Um, so we would love to invite you to that event as well and, and, and introduce you to our community and hear a little bit more about, um, you know, about you uh, over there. So thank you so much for joining us today. It was very lovely Bye. to meet you. You too. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.